It's difficult to survive as an artist. In Vancouver, it is particularly difficult. The challenge lies in getting the right amount and type of exposure to a public that's not even used to buying artwork. We started The Cheaper Show 10 years ago as a means of changing this situation. When choosing the artwork, we've always placed a focus on both quality and diversity. We display this work in a non-traditional setting where anyone from any background can attend and find themselves in an environment that is accessible and affordable. We always present the work in a traditional salon style fashion, which allows the artwork to have a sense of activation as illustrations sit next to oil paintings and photographs right next to acrylic works with content that ranges from the urban to the academic. We place a focus on local artists, but we also open up the show to both national and international artists. We've shown artists from every corner of the planet. One of the reasons why I came to Vancouver, I was like, well, you know, things like this are happening in this city. I really want to be a part of it. It eliminates any kind of like artistic hierarchy that one might feel. It eliminates any kind of intimidation I might feel by coming in because I feel just as important as any other artist because we're all selling for the same amount. Putting something of mine on the wall for the first time, knowing full well that thousands of people were going to come through and look at it and comment on it and I'd, I could stand around and listen to what they had to say and see if my piece sold, it was incredible. Well, one of the least challenges with Cheaper Show 8 was to take a show, an art show, that had been really successful for seven years and turn it into an event. We wanted to make the show different from what it was before. I remember when I dropped my work off a couple of days before the show, I'd never been in that location before. I mean, this is really big. Like, how are we going to fill all this space? It definitely seemed like a big community action. Like, everybody had, like, a small part, all the artists bringing in their work, so many volunteers coming in, hanging the work, did it all in like what, two days, like just the actual physical hanging. So much prep work before that, it was crazy all for like five hours. Favorite day during the show is the art drop-off day when everyone shows up with their stuff and everyone's excited and wants to see what everyone else has done. Everyone who worked on the show was completely exhausted. We'd been there for 20 hours the day before and then all day the day of. So like being completely nervous and anxious and like sleep deprived. Everyone was doing five different things at once. We were working around the clock to build this impossible show that no one really thought was going to come together like it did. Coming down to the show and seeing the sheer volume of people, like the lineup that went like down the block to the point that you couldn't see the lineup. People are like fighting over pieces and there were people crying over not being able to get the pieces they wanted. Uh, that kind of energy and drama isn't the sort of thing you see in most uh, gallery openings. Just walking around there even and just meeting people and like people being, oh, are you one of the artists? Yeah, are you? Yeah, totally. Oh, which one did you do? Oh, cool. And then like it really like formed a lot of relationships and, and things with a lot of great, completely talented people. Now I have, you know, all these other new connections and opportunities just because of this one show. You know, you could have first time showers and you could have someone that, you know, has pieces that sell for thousands and thousands of dollars hanging right next to each other. It's like the biggest art show I've ever been a part of or even been witness to. I remember walking through and making a list and thinking, oh, it's going to be hard to find something. What am I going to be interested in? And just being like blown away. I, I wish I had, you know, 5,000 bucks on me that night to buy art. Through our distinct manner of curating the show, wherein we have a diverse amount of styles and disciplines, we have the ability to pinpoint the talent and announce their name and display their work in an activated environment. The website is a massive extension of this service. To really reach a wider base of people, um, provide a lot more information, a lot more exposure for artists. Essentially extending what the show achieves in a single night into a year-round community that supports and sells highly curated emerging talent from around the world. It started as such a DIY little show and it's become this event now showcasing 150 artists and 5,000 people coming out to see. But it has a lot of potential to continue to grow and to continue to do what it's doing, exposing artists, making art available, all of those things. The majority of the artists that are making this work are not doing this to make money. They're not even accustomed to this practice. They make this work to convey an idea or a feeling. This is how they record our emotional and intellectual history. This is their language, their voice. We're in the unique position to hold a microphone to that voice, and The Cheaper Show acts as an amplifier 
to announce to this city and to the world the talent that is among them.